you hear me? Okay. All right. Okay, so my um, uh, task before was to uh, explain the multi-scale asymptote expansion method, right? So we, it's the, it started everything. And we found uh, heuristically the value of uh, U0. And then for the, for the past days, we were trying to prove that really uh, this U0 that we found is the homogenized uh, or gives the homogenized uh, problem. Okay, so uh, Prof. Nanda told me to uh, share something on the applications of homogenization. So I'm also tr uh, doing controls, but I think I will uh, uh, do it on Friday, uh, on Thursday for my research talk. But I found this paper, it's not my paper, okay? But I would like to share it to you because uh, I just, uh, Okay, those are my, uh, okay, so the paper is this paper. Okay, just a, a short story. So I'm doing this with uh, Elia and Ivy for some uh, time, some months. Okay, just a, a background. Okay, so my university, uh, University of the Philippines, Las Banas, is the niche, is actually on the life sciences environment and agriculture. So we are trying to apply uh, this con uh, concept of homogenization, no? just to be relevant to the community. So this topic caught our attention because it's on population dynamics. We have um, a strong biology uh, um, department. We have so many um, collaborators with the biology, uh, biology department. And so, uh, with some uh, ecology experts, we are trying to uh, work on uh, some problems uh, like this. And so uh, it's all about um, homogenization techniques in population dynamics. So I'll sh uh, show you the motivation of the study. So say we have a landscape with uh, heterogeneous uh, neighborhoods on the smaller scale. And you know, if you have uh, a landscape, uh, the edges or the interface uh, most of the time is sharp. There is a sharp transition in the edge or in the interface. Okay, so look at the following. You have a forest or you have a grassland and they can mix together to form something like that. Okay, so you can see the, I think the periodicity, <laughs> some sort of periodicity in the landscape and well, if you uh, look at the small scale, you don't see, well, of course, in the forest, there is some, something happening in the forest, which is homogeneous, maybe, most probably. And, or the grassland, they exhibit the same um, property. Okay, Hom uh, population growth is the same or homogeneous in the forest or homogeneous in the grassland. So, separately. So the problem is, in the context of ecology, how do you view this from afar, no? from the distance, if you see this landscape? So is there a macro behavior with this um, micro uh, things, uh, heterogeneous neighborhoods? So actually, that's a fundamental, oh, anyway, this landscape is not just true for forest or grassland. We have rural areas, urban areas. And how do you um, manage, for instance, the movement of the population? In the end, how do you know the population density? That's a problem. Okay? Or you have a lake and a shore, for instance. So this kind of landscapes. So a fundamental problem in theoretical ecology is to determine the extent in which individual processes on a smaller scale affects the population responses on the larger scales. That's a fundamental question in theoretical ecology. And do you see the magic words? We have smaller scales and we have the, or the fast scale, and then we have the large or slow scale. So of course, homogenization can come in. Right? Do you agree? No? Agree with that? 
Okay, so yeah, so it, it caught us our attention, and uh, I think it's a nice problem. Yeah, we, we are trying to fit in into the into what the university is doing, and uh, of course, uh, you also want to be relevant sometimes, right? Or most of the time. <laughs> okay, so not not sometimes. Every time you must be relevant, correct? Right? You must be relevant. But what are we doing? <laughs> okay. Why 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 we do we have this homogenization? Of course, it's not just for composite materials, right? Not just materials. You see, it's a very realistic problem where homogenization can uh, go in. Okay. So the paper is divided into three. Okay. The modeling process the homogenization process, and of course, the conclusion, okay? So, this uh, paper, which is an ecological diffusion model, is a mechanistic model, okay? Meaning, you have some complex system that is being, uh, where there are individuals, and there are some relationships which are expressed as a mathematical uh, equation. That's a mechanistic model, okay? in contrast with a phenomenological model, which starts with some data, and then you try to fit, and you have a linear regression, right? So those are two types of modeling. So this is a mechanistic model, and in the reference by our main reference, York and Cobold, so they considered um, the, the ECS, which is a di one-dimensional landscape, Periodically, uh, periodically partitioned into intervals. They call it patches. So it's just an interval, yi minus one yi, and uh, you have this kind of setup. You have a type one patch, and you have a type two patch, and then you repeat it, okay? So you have periodicity in that sense. The width of the patches of type one and type two patch are not necessarily the same, okay? So what is in there in, in patch one? What is in there in patch two? So as I've said earlier, in patch one, everything is homogeneous. In patch two, everything is homogeneous. But they are entirely different, the two patches. Okay? Okay. So, so the dynamics uh, or the novelty of the paper is that on the interface or the boundary between the two patches, it creates the problem, okay? Um, because there are several studies that when you have a species in patch one, you have a species in patch two, why do they transfer? Or they, why do they migrate? Or sometimes they avoid the edge. Or sometimes they cross the edge. So there are lots of literature on this, biological literature on this, on why and how, okay? So in this um, um, model, so the, fir the first equation describes the uh, reaction diffusion model in, in uh, a patch. So I will explain the variables later. The second is the continuity of the uh, flux on the interface. Okay? The third is the interface condition. So how does uh, one transfer from on the interface, across the interface? So I will explain later. Okay, just, um, well, some, uh, some caution on modeling. So, uh, all models are wrong, but some are useful. But don't get me wrong, okay? I don't, I'm not saying that don't do modeling. Definitely, modeling uh, is important as homogenization, okay? But modeling, of course, has some advantage or disadvantage depending on their usefulness. So how are they, how can they be useful? Or how wrong can your model be to be useful? Okay? So just to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a different story. So I have the a model, no? this is the equator. I think I must, uh, I draw, I'm not good in drawing. So, correct me if I'm wrong. This is uh, India. <laughs> okay, am I right? 
Okay, sorry. No? <laughs> I'm very poor in drawing. No? All the directions. <laughs> I copy it. Alita? Ah, there is this portion? That must be like that. Ah, okay. 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 So that's India. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so eight hours or nine hours from India. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the equator. I'm right. You're above the equator. Above. Okay. So Philippines is here. Eight hours. No. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just. <laughs> no. These are very rough. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. No, no. <laughs> Something like this. I think I can draw better. I think you need faster. No, no, no. Uh, maybe uh, smaller than India, very small than India. <laughs> but we have, if India has one island, right? Yeah, no, yeah? one big island. We have here uh, 7,641 really? islands. So in between them, 7,641, depending if it's high tide or low tide. Okay? So that's a. Uh, but our. Uh, uh, land area is just 0.3 million uh, square kilometers, but India has 3.287 square kilo, uh, million square kilometers. So we are just <laughs> a very small. Of course, we d we must draw US, right? Because we have a representative from the US. Yeah, this is passive. <laughs> So this is the Pacific Ocean, okay? But here is the U.S., very big U.S. here. <laughs> and France, three times. three times, three times of India, maybe. Okay, and then France and Italy are here, right? Maybe yeah. here. So France is uh, like a pentagon, they're hexagon. Doing, doing <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, no. But anyway, something like that. No. <laughs> no, but that's the point. That's the point of my next statement. Okay? <laughs> Italy is longer. Like that. Uh, and uh, it's... <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So uh, is that complete? We are all, co we have drawn all the countries. Okay. So this is a model, right? A representation, a map. So is this useful? Don't not mind the drawing. Okay. <laughs> Don't mind the drawing. So is this useful for us? Is a map useful for us? Yes, of course. No? Even if it is not precise, even if it's drawn better, it's useful for us. So it's not wrong. I mean, yeah, it's wrong some because, uh, you know, it's not precise. Uh, Dr. Uh, Nanda Kumar is telling us that, you know what? India is not drawn properly on the map because it is underrating its size. Right, doctor? Because of some geometrical uh, uh, construction. Okay, so it's not precise. It's not uh, entirely correct, but it's useful. So it's okay. Right? So it is useful in explaining. So it's an explanatory model. No? Now, I will give you another model, which is called a predictive model. Now, I will go to Philippines. No? I know a lot. Okay? <laughs> Not just the drawing. So we have at least 20 typhoons, storms, hurricanes a year. No? A typhoon, strong. Some are strong, some are mild, some are. Okay. And it's all coming here in the Pacific. So maybe um, in seven days, we know that there is a typhoon. Okay. 
Now, with a lot of typhoon model from different countries, we also have our own, we can predict, no? We can predict the track of the model, the path of the model, of the typhoon, sorry. Okay, so that's very useful for us. We can prepare, no? So, though sometimes, of course, it's incorrect. Hmm? It's not this path which they uh, take, these typhoons. So in that sense, again, it's useful. But, yeah, the, the, the point is, model, a model, no? because uh, truth is complex, reality is complex. No? So if this is reality, or the real world system, you just have an assumed real system, or assumed reality. And this is what you model. Because you cannot take into account all the complexities, all the variables. Okay? If you take into consideration all, it's not possible. It might be the case that you cannot analyze the model. It's too many variables. But if there are two less variables, that will be, of course, you will expect that it will be entirely wrong. It will give you a poor or misleading conclusion, okay? So that's the point. And uh, you also hear this one. A model is only as good as its assumptions. What you put in is what you get, okay? And it all stems from the, it's an assumed reality, okay? You only have uh, you can uh, can only incorporate as much as you can. Okay, but but the thing is, you must get the essentials, right? A good model must have the essential things. Okay, so how do you do that? That's the challenge of modeling. Okay, so let me go back to the model, and as I have told you, I will explain the model. Okay, so this is happening on the patch, on a particular patch. So you have here your reaction diffusion. So first, rho is of course the population density because that is what we want. Tau is our time variable. Actually, this is the small scale or the fast scale. Y is the location variable. Di is the motility of individuals or the movement. Uh, rate of the in, of individuals, so happening on patch uh, one or two, and Fi gives you the growth and the, that dynamics. So as you can see, there is an extra term epsilon squared there, that there's a it's put in there to it has a purpose, okay. And then uh, we have uh, yi plus and yi minus as the right and left hand left side limits at yi. So Again, the second uh, equation, I think the first equation is clear, okay? So you just have uh, partial with respect to, this is the usual reaction diffusion model that we know, okay? So this is the continuity of the flux, and then this is the interface condition. So alpha i plus or minus is the probability of an individual at interface yi to move to the right or to the left. So we consider alpha i plus, for instance, to be uh, in the set 0, 1, in interval 0, 1. So alpha i minus will be just 1 minus alpha i plus. Okay? So we have this uh, representation. So uh, Madame Donato is always telling me when I was her student that if you are clear with your notations, then you are halfway through your problem. If you have good notations, then the the next will follow, okay? So we must have good, good notations, clear notations. Okay, so let's go back. So we consider a periodic environment consisting of two types of alternating patches, okay? It's clear, no? And uh, the interval yi minus 1, yi is a patch of type 1 or type 2 whenever i is add or even, respectively. 
let us say type 1 has width delta y1 while type 2 has width delta y2. Okay? So we define the motility coefficients and growth functions as di. So d1, if i is add, it's uh, consistent. d2, if i is even. fi of rho is f1 of rho if i is add. And f2 uh, of rho if i is even. Okay? So this is defining the, our uh, equation or our system. Okay, now, on the interface is the, the problem, no? So the, individu uh, the probabilities that individuals at interfaces move to the right or left will be defined as alpha i plus minus. So again, it is given by alpha 1 plus or minus if i is add. Okay. Now, this is what you call the simplification of the model. So it's, um, it's a question on modeling. How do you simplify your model? So to simplify the model, because it will give you a nice um, equation or system, but of course you must take into account that it is really happening. No? Does it make sense if you simplify? Will it have applications when you simpli simplify the thing? Or sometimes you simplify it and then later consider a more uh, general or a more complicated one. So you start most of the time with simple thing, questions. Okay, so to simplify the interface conditions, it is assumed that the probability that an individual moves towards a patch of type 1 or type 2 is independent of whether the patch is to the right or to the left of the interface. So we have uh, alpha 1 minus is equal to alpha 2 plus, just alpha. And then of course the the rest will be 1 minus alpha, alpha 1 plus or alpha 2 minus. And to simplify further the notation, just the notation, we set uh, it to be ki, which is k uh, negative 1 if i is odd, k if uh, i is even. And you can uh, readily, readily compute that k is equal to that expression from the formulation earlier, from the third equation. Okay? Now, we have the final reaction diffusion model. So the reaction diffusion model on the small scale, okay, happening on a patch, okay, is given by this system. Okay, so um, actually this, just, uh, this is the one which uh, changed, no? That Ki you know, earlier. Okay, so now, we have the model, okay? We have the, the thing that we will homogenize. Okay. All right, so, so at the fast or small scale, so we are given with the spatial and temporal variables as y and tau, okay? So we must now define our slow or large scale variables. And what have we done? So. We set x equal to epsilon y, as we have done. Okay, y is equal to x over epsilon. And for the time, we have epsilon squared tau. Okay? Okay? Is that okay? And uh, further, rho will depend explicitly on both x, y, and t. Not tau, but t. Of course, we will assume that x and y are independent so that our partial derivative y will be equal to, with respect to y, will be equal to that. We know that now from our discussion. And uh, this is the another assumption that the motilities, the di, and growth parameters, fi, only depend on the fast scale variable because that is where the local behavior is happening okay you want to get the uh, macro behavior using those uh, parameters given those parameters and uh, this is another assumption which simplifies the problem 
that the patch widths are the same. But uh, in the paper, they also extend to different widths. So, yeah. The T is... Um, well, the epsilon squared uh, in the equation earlier, okay, they, they add that so that in the uh, fast scale, the growth is slow. So they add this epsilon squared here to focus or to when you zoom in no, on the fast scale, the growth will be slow in terms of time. So that is why they put that epsilon squared. Yeah, but it will uh, simplify your, uh, you will see the, the next uh, slide, which you will have that just implication. Yeah. Not that just, not just to simplify the, the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I think so. Okay, so upon uh, uh, upscaling, so we have uh, the slow uh, scale reaction diffusion model. So you just replace earlier, okay, the partial of y. We replace this by this uh, thing we know, okay, and the uh, tau is now t, okay, so. Epsilon squared is gone, okay, because of our uh, x, x uh, no, tau uh, relationship and t. Okay, so as you can see, we can now um, homogenize this, right? This is what we did in uh, multi-scale uh, expansion, asymptote expansion model, right? Is that right? We did this, <laughs> okay, in the first day. So again, the goal is to examine the asymptotic behavior of this problem as epsilon goes to zero. And the homogenized problem will uh, somehow, hopefully, describe the population density of the entire landscape on a large scale, on a macro scale, okay? Okay, so you are familiar with that. What you do is to express your solution row, okay, as a, as a series expansion, okay, and then we find row zero, okay, row one, row two. So you will, um, I will next explain. You, I think it's a good exercise for you to look at the paper and how you can do it. Actually, the. You have an order epsilon negative two, order epsilon negative one, order epsilon zero. Okay, and you can uh, check. Now, um, the growth function fi, okay, must be uh, a function satisfying this property. Okay. So there are lots of uh, functions. Okay, logistic growth you can uh, use for fi. And that is actually the uh, example in the paper. So the homogenized problem is given by this expression. Okay, so without uh, the epsilon. Okay, and uh, you will see in the expression of row zero. This is the leading order approximation of our expansion of our series expansion that our row zero x y t does not depend on y, our fast variable y. Okay, so uh, it depends only on x and t. Y zero plus is of course uh, known, okay? And this h of y is given uh, by this expression. Well, you know k, the k is the, uh, on the third uh, equation, okay? So on the, in, on the in, in interface. Okay, so this is the homogenized diffusion coefficient, okay? The di, d, so you have this, so it's constant, right? Okay, so that g there is uh, independent of y. Okay, 
So they gave a particular example. They uh, look at the logistic growth function for FI. So they replace FI by a logistic growth function. So given by this, okay, lambda i minus mu i rho times rho. Okay. And uh, so you are familiar with the logistic growth function. No? So you have uh, the growth rate, lambda i, and then you have the competition coefficient mu i. You have the carrying capacity, actually, on the logistic growth function. So, uh, I'm, showing, uh, I'm showing you, so earlier they used equal width delta y, but in their example, they use different widths. So the delta y becomes L1 and L2. And so you will see that there is an L1, L2 here. Okay, so the homogenized diffusion equation will be looking uh, at, at this formulation. Uh, they just use G, til G tilde to differentiate from uh, G, which uh, makes it the same uh, patch width. So with G tilde, it's uh, different widths. Okay, so the homogenized diffusion coefficient is given by this expression. Okay, so that lambda and that M are called the intrinsic growth rate and intraspecific competition coefficients, and it will be given by these um, equations. Okay, so you can look at the paper. Okay, so aside from that, so they uh, homogenize the problem by using the multi-scale expansion method, asymptote expansion method, but they did not give any proof okay, for that. No? But rather, they uh, try to compare the homogenized, the solution of the homogenized problem with the traveling, uh, well, they use uh, both traveling wave equations for the non-homogenized and the homogenized model. Okay, so this uh, one shows, the red one shows the uh, solution of the homogenized, while the black one shows the non-homogenized. And you would see, uh, the, uh, can you see? So the, the red, which are dashed, are the solution for the homogenized, and the black are the solution for the um, non-homogenized. Um, this uh, just the, the zoom in. No? So this red one is the upper bound for G, okay? Uh, this one is the lower bound, which is given by G over K. Okay, so you would see the agreement. So of course, uh, they uh, set T, in this case, T equal to 10 in this uh, uh, drawing, in this graph. Okay, so you would see Y and this is the density, the variable Y and this density. Okay, um, they use the traveling wave equation, uh, solutions because this is a re reaction diffusion uh, equation which is known to have a traveling wave solution. So uh, they, they use the traveling wave uh, solution for that reaction diffusion model. Okay, so, well, they uh, also make uh, some uh, conclusions or some, uh, of course, variation of the parameters, okay? What will happen to the uh, homogenized uh, problem in comparison with uh, the non-homogenized model. Okay, so what uh, was their uh, other findings from the homogenized problem? So they get some insights from the homogenized problem, such as, for instance, the persistence, population persistence. So will the uh, species stay within your, uh, their residence or their patch? Okay. So from the homogenized problem, they got some useful insights of what's happening. Okay. So for instance, for logistic growth, uh, using that FI, logistic growth function, and that dynamics, the persistence condition for the logistic example demonstrate that patch residence time plays a key role in determining population persistence. So how long have you been in the patch will determine your persistence or the population persistence. Furthermore, they conclude that the approximate uh, persistence condition from the homogenized uh, equation, it suggests that invasion 
will occur whenever a weighted average of the patch-specific intrinsic growth rates is positive. If the lambda uh, i, L1, plus lambda 2, L2 is positive, is greater than zero. Okay? And uh, if at a patch interface, the probability of moving into patch 1 is high, then the patch 2 residence time will be low, and less motility in patch 2 is much lower than patch 1 or the size of patch 2 is much larger than patch 1. So here we can see how the small-scale processes trade off against one another to give the landscape or the macro-scale behavior. Okay, so those are some uh, insights from the homogenized problem. And uh, of course, they give a specific uh, explanation on that. These are just the summary. And uh, this is one which uh, um, curiosity uh, comes in. Numerical results suggest that the carrying capacity of the homogenized equation can be higher than the highest carrying capacity in the small scale equation. So they explain why the overshooting in the carrying capacity of the homogenized problem happened. And, uh, well, I'm, uh, I think I'm a little fast, but uh, I think I'm more interested on what can be done further, for instance, with this kind of uh, problem. So what are the benefits of homogenization in this uh, aspect? So we saw that an approximate model was found to describe the behavior of the whole system by, well, this is homogenization, by appropriately averaging the variation in the movement and growth parameters in the fast scale. So that is what is expected of uh, homogenization. And uh, well, you may ask, well, if, if you can do numerical results, why homogenize? I mean, you can do numer numerical analysis for that problem, of course. But what is the good thing with the homogenized problem? So you can easily analyze the homogenized problem, of course, without the epsilon and without the dependence on y for the small uh, fast scale variable. And uh, lastly, the homogenized model gives some theoretical insights between uh, local movement behaviors and the uh, total landscape behavior or the population uh, dynamics for the large scale system. Okay, so thank you for your attention.